Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q4 FY22 Minda Corporation Limited conference call hosted by Lara Securities Private Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you decisions during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star and then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Jay Kale from LRR Securities Private Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, on behalf of Ilara Capital, uh, I welcome you to the Q4 FY22 Result Conference Call of Minda Corporation. Uh, today, from the management, we have, uh, you know, we have Mr. Akash Minda, uh, uh, Executive Director of Finance and Strategy. We have Mr. Ashok Minda, Chairman and Group CEO. Mr. Neeraj Mahajan, Group Marketing Officer. Uh, Mr. Vinod Raheja, Group CFO. Mr. Anshul Saxena, Group Head, Strategy and M&A. Uh, I'd like to hand over the call to Mr. Akash Minda for his opening remarks. Over to you, Akash. Uh, good afternoon. Good evening, Jay. Thank you so much uh, to Ilara Capital for hosting us, uh, our quarterly and uh, yearly uh, presentation. I would now like to invite Mr. Ashok Minda to give the opening remarks. Thank you, Akash. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the quarter four financial year 22 earning conference call of Minda Corporation. I would like to thank you all for joining us on this conference call here today and hope you are staying safe and healthy. In the fourth quarter of financial year 2022, auto industry delivered a mixed performance. Revival in economic activity helped, helped in slight demand pickup for commercial vehicles and passenger vehicle segments, while the two billion industries continued to post some per numbers. The industry as a whole continued to face challenges of semiconductor shortages and global geopolitical tensions. Even under these circumstances, I am pleased to report that Minda Corporation has continued to deliver strong performance. Our focus is on consistent and sustainable performance. Minda Corporation has achieved highest ever quarterly revenues of INR 9,478 million with EBITDA of 11.4 percent at rupees 1,078 million. For the financial year 2022, we delivered a consolidated revenue of rupees 29,759 million with 25 percent, 25.7 percent year-on-year growth. EBITDA for the full year was 9.9 percent at rupees 2,946 million. Profit after tax for the year was rupees 1,919 million rupees. In line with our current performance, Board of Directors have announced final dividend of, of 35%, uh, which is uh, 0.07%. Uh, uh, 0 0.070 per equity share. Total dividend for the year is 50%, which is 1 rupees per equity share. Now, I would like to update you on important development of the quarter. The PLI application filed by the company has been approved under the Component Champion Incentive Scheme. We have also successfully completed the transaction of Minda storage acquisition and from this quarter, company will operate as wholly owned subsidiary under the name of Minda Instrument Limited. To drive the growth at Minda Corporation, our continued focus is on A, driving technology from in-house initiative and global tie-ups, B, operational excellence through cost leadership, 
see growing customer and market segment and generating higher free cash flow and right capital allocation. Looking ahead, industry growth prospects is expected to improve further with increasing demand for personal mobility and supported by easing supply chain issues. We at Minda Corporation remain confident in delivering accelerating growth by strengthening the core business and capturing the emerging opportunities. With this, I would now like to hand over the call to Mr. Akash Minda to discuss the financial and the operational performance of the company during the quarter and financial year 2022. Thank you, sir. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I now request you to look at the slides which have been uploaded for the quarterly and the annual earnings call. Referring page three, I would like to state the highlights for quarter four and financial year FY22 performance. Our focus is enhancing the core and deepening capabilities. For the quarter four, the revenue growth of the quarter continues to outperform the industry performance. We have improved double-digit EBITDA margins for the third straight quarter on sequential basis. Total lifetime order book booked in the quarter four has been for rupees 14,500 million. Eight patents have been filed during the quarter and we've been granted PLI application. For the full year, some highlights. Uh, our FY22 revenue growth has been 25.8% year on year despite challenging macroeconomic scenarios and other shortages. Our EBITDA margins increased by 73 basis points to 9.9% uh, for the year 22. Total lifetime order book in the year was INR 59,300 million. 28 patents have been filed in the year and four partnerships have been endorsed in this uh, financial year for technology advancement. I'd like to now move to the next slide, which is slide four. This shows the consistent and sustainable market beating profitable growth which is the focus of Minda Corporation. If you see on quarter on quarter basis, we have delivered the highest ever quarterly operating revenue at INR 9,478 million with a growth of 19.4% on year on year basis. On the EBITDA, it's again the highest ever quarterly absolute EBITDA of rupees 1,077 million and margin improved by 70 basis points on quarter on quarter. Also, Highest ever tax margin uh, from uh, 80, uh, uh, rupees 17, uh, 5.9 uh, million. In revenue, we've grown, been, grown by 19%. EBITDA, we've increased by 21%. And PAT has grown by 39% on year on year basis. I would now like to move to the next slide, which shows the overall landscape of Minda Corporation. So the revenue has been about uh, rupees 29,759 million. Our business vertical and key customers are shown. Uh, on the left, where green customers mark the uh, EV customers. This quarter, we have added ultraviolet and uh, global tier one as one of the customers for us. We have 32 manufacturing locations and R&D capabilities across various divisions. I would like to share that we have, in, in, over the last one year, we have increased our number of shareholders from 49,200 to 83,653. And uh, the shareholding is on the right side. I would now move to the next slide, which is the revenue breakup for the financial year. If you look at by geography, this is on year on year. India contributes majority to about 84%. Exports of uh, Europe and uh, North America contribute to, be our, contribute to about 10%. And Southeast Asia, where our plants contribute about 5.5%. By end market, our two-wheeler is about 48%. Passenger vehicle is about 17%. Commercial vertical is about 18% and aftermarket is about 15%. By business vertical, mechatronics and aftermarket is about 55-56% and information and connection system is about 43.3%. I now move to the next slide, which is on the industry performance. Uh, if I look at the financial year 22 growth, the industry had a muted uh, growth of about only 1.2%. And if I look at quarter four, uh, which is on quarter on quarter, then industry degrew by about 16.6%. There were, of course, supply chain issues globally, global macroeconomic issues, subdued sentiments uh, all across India, 
and infrastructure spending and other replacement demands seem to have also factored in terms of growth. We remain cautiously optimistic about the Indian auto industry due to the low penetration rising income, but we are also aware of the externalities uh, which will have impact on the automotive demand and supply. I now move to the slide 8, which is on the consolidated performance. Our focus is on continued momentum of growth and outperforming quarter on quarter and year on year. The company consolidated net revenue for the quarter 4 stood at 947 crores at EBITDA 11.4% at 107.7 crore. These numbers are including Minda Instruments Limited. I request you to look at the first column on the left. If I compare this from quarter 3 to quarter 4, the growth was about 28.4% uh, uh, in top line, whereas the industry only grew by 2%. Our EBITDA has grown from 78.7 crore to 107 crores, from 10.7% margin to 11.4% margin. Our PBT has increased from 6.7% to 7.6%. If I compare year-on-year -year growth, 794 crores is now translated into 947 crores, which is a growth of 20%. EBITDA margin has grown from 11.2% to 11.4%. If I look at our numbers without uh, Minda Instruments, then uh, year on year, 794 crores has gone to 800 crores, and 889 uh, EBITDA has gone to 88 uh, EBITDA. If I look at for the full year on the right side, uh, including Minda uh, 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 Instruments Limited, we did about 2,975 crores with 9.9% or 10% EBITDA at 294 crores and 6.1% PBT margin and fat margin of 6.4%. If I compare to the FI21, then we have a growth of about 25.7% and our EBITDA margin has grown, grown by 73 basis points from 9.2% to 9.9% from 217 crore EBITDA to 294 crore EBITDA. And that has increased from 93 to 191. There are some exceptional items which I will explain. So our, uh, in the revenue front, our operations outperform the industries. New businesses and increase in share of businesses uh, in existing customers in, in all our divisions that ex has supported this growth, along with growth in exports and aftermarket. Our EBITDA margin at 11.4% in quarter, quarter 4 delivered uh, double digit despite higher commodity and adverse impacts of supply chain issues. But it was supported by sustained productivity and operational efficiency drives. In, in quarter 4, PAT includes one-time tax benefits of 22 crores on based on past corporate guarantee of uh, Minda KTSN, which is now been delivered. Based on this performance, the board of directors have declared final dividend of 35% at INR 70 PESA per equity share, with the payout ratio is 20%. I now take you to the next slide, which is business vertical performance for the quarter 4. If I speak about the business vertical, mechatronics and aftermarket, the year-on-year -year quarter uh, revenue has grown from 445 crores to 470 crores, and EBITDA margin has gone to 13.4. From quarter 3 to quarter 4, 445 crores revenue is 470, and 13% EBITDA has grown to 13.4. <coughs> the revenue stability was supported by strong fundamental increase in various customers and segments. And EBITDA grew favorably due to the recovery of raw material indexation from customers and various initiatives taken uh, for the permanent measures for cost savings internally. If I look at the information and connection systems, which is primarily wiring harness division, in quarter 3, we did 293 crores with 7.2% EBITDA. And this quarter, we have done 338 crores with 7.4% EBITDA. The two-wheeler market degrew, but increase in share of businesses and sustained sales and uptake due to commercial vehicle has given us this, this growth. Our EBITDA margin stood at 7.4% due to favorable product mix and also tight control on fixed costs and neutralized lag between commodity and other cost initiatives. If I look at full year, our mechatronics uh, division has grown from 1,365 crores to 6, 1,687 crores, increase in EBITDA from 118 to 12.3%. And the information system uh, has gone from 1,000 crores to 1,150 crores, increased in EBITDA from 5.6% to 5.9%. I would now move to the next slide, which is slide number 10. I would like to share this slide as the initiatives and the 
actions that have been taken in the last few quarters and how they have resulted. I would like to share that while the industry has grown uh, from 6% to negative to now 1.2%, Minda Corporation revenue has grown 19% and then much higher than the industry in all these years. If I look at the bottom part of the table, uh, before our loss making, before exiting our loss making businesses, we can see variable performance. But on the right side, you can see quarter on quarter growth and consistent and sustainable performance both in top line and in the beta numbers uh, going forward. This is the slide just to share confidence on how Minda Corporation has uh, performed after our transformation in the last two years. And now move to the next slide, which is a consolidated leverage position. Our net worth has increased from 1146 crores to 1330 crores. Our gross debt has reduced from 483 crores to 391 crores. Cash has come down from 499 crores to 336 crores. We can uh, in the last part of the slide, you can see the details. Our, our net debt is about 50, 55 crores right now, and net debt to net worth is 0.04. If I speak about our ROC on the focus to move towards 20 to 25 percent and higher, in last year we did about 12 percent ROC, and this year annualized. Uh, because the quarter one was uh, COVID impacted, we are about 18.4 percent. Working capital days have come down from 46 to 41 days. Credit rating agencies have reaffirmed our ratings. Now move to the next slide on our performance of the wholly owned subsidiaries and joint ventures. Minda Instruments Limited, which is a 100 percent wholly owned subsidiary. If you see our year-on-year -year performance, we did a 389 crores in FY21 as a turnover, which is now 484 crores, a growth. EBITDA of 11.7% in FY21, and this is 11%. And uh, the debt is, uh, the net debt it is having fixed deposits, so from 69 crores to 63 crores. If I look at Minda Vast, our sole focus has been on order booking and turning around this uh, organization, where Minda Corporation holds 50%. If you can see on the right side, the FY21 was 143 crores. Uh, we have now done, did a turnover of 218 crores. EBITDA was negative last year, and we have now done a 6.9% EBITDA, uh, in spite of being a COVID year and all the efforts in of turning around. Minda Impact, which is the latest joint venture formed for the antenna solutions with Korea, now has order book of 131 crores lifetime based on all the four wheeler customers of Maruti Suzuki, Minda, and others. Uh, Spark Winter Green Mobility is a new initiative which is a wholly owned subsidiary which we formed last year. This is primarily focusing on design, development and manufacturing of the electric vehicle uh, components and systems. We now move to the next slide which is on the business performance in the order one. If you see the full year we have uh, orders booked worth 5900 crores out of which 2400 crores have been replacement and 3,500 crores have been uh, as for the, for the new businesses. If I look at quarter four on the extreme right, about 1,450 crores worth of orders have been booked for this quarter on the lifetime basis. 565 crores are replacement and 885 are the new businesses which will move in the growth. In the center, there are mechatronics division, which is the first vertical. So 2,070 uh, crores, 2,700 uh, lifetime order book has been booked in this year. Uh, uh, and out of which 70% is primarily two wheelers and three wheelers, and other segments are about 30%. In quarter four, we booked 424 crores. In information and connection systems, in the entire year, we booked 2,550 crores worth of order book, out of which 53% coming from two wheelers and three wheelers, and 47% coming from other segments. And about 900 crores of orders have been booked within this quarter. Export orders, one in the entire financial year, have been. Uh, for 635 crores on the lifetime basis, and EV order book stands at 952 million or 952 crores uh, for the entire year. We now move to the slide 15, which is uh, sharing on the strategic pillars of the growth for Sparkminda. So, as shared in the beginning of the year, our focus is on narrowing focus and deepening capabilities and centering the pillars of growth. Focus on enhancing the core, which is on the our core product lines. Electric vehicle growth opportunity, which are our product lines, which are EV agnostic. Innovation and technology through in-house initiatives and investments, as well as global tie-ups in the areas of new product lines, as well as existing. And centering passenger vehicle offerings in all our product lines uh, that we currently do. Our outcome is to transform and become complete solution provider to the OEMs 
achieve cost leadership in operational excellence and thought leadership in technology, premiumization and product innovation of all our products, and drive better than industry growth, which is more profitable. <laughs> we now move to the next slide, which is enhancing the course. Our focus is on safety and security systems, wiring harness division, die casting division, and instrument clusters and sensors. <clears throat> in the safety and security systems, we are the only company in India with a developed capability for keyless entry solutions. We have filed more than 23 patents and a preferred supplier to most of our OEMs in India and globally and gaining 100% RFQs which are converted for the keyless entry solutions in the IC and EV platforms. Wiring harness division, we are setting up the state of the art component division for our localization needs and focusing on export and aftermarket and most important is the, the raw material indexation and the lag along with the customers has now been um, with strategic initiatives aligned with the customers as well as with our suppliers. Die casting division continues to be our focus for growth and exports area as, and the, uh, we're looking at preferred cost effective global partners for turbochargers to our customers globally in all the four areas of technology which is uh, in, the, in the castings and developing complete in-house process to supply all the die casting parts. In the instrument clusters and sensors which is now Minda Instruments Limited, now we have full control and access of this business which gives us opportunity to grow uh, in, the, in, in, the, in the global markets as well as develop products and technology uh, coming from our technical partners for the, all the segments in the industry. <coughs> Moving to the next slide which is innovation and technology. Our uh, approach has been setting up our own R&D unit, looking at technology licenses and setting up joint venture with global partners. In the last year, we have developed uh, path-breaking smart key solutions, set up of the new electronic manufacturing excellence division and also started production of intelligent transportation systems. <coughs> Important achievements in the last 12 months from the partnership perspective, we have converted one TLA with right vision of Israel for two-wheeler ADAS converted a joint venture with Infact Elex of Korea for antenna solutions, acquired equity stake of 26% in EVQ point in Bangalore for EV states, and acquired MI Minda Instruments Limited from the Stone Ridge uh, joint venture. Technical collaboration continues. <laughs> Just to focus on the engineering capabilities that we're developing in-house to our technical center, focusing on <coughs> vehicle architecture, vehicle connection systems, electronics, and vehicle access and light weighting. We have more than 200 uh, patents filed. About 2% is on the R&D spending and we have now about 500 engineers working across our divisions. The focus is on looking at software, electronic hardware, embedded software, grading our testing facilities and mechatronic engineering. We now take to the <coughs> last few slides, focus on the electric vehicle mobility. So this slide we've shared before, but on the left you can see the two-wheeler with all our product lines. So all our product lines that Minda Corporation does are EV agnostic. So when the EV can comes in, they'll be going to more of a premiumization route, which is through electronification and light weighting and also premium. Clusters are going to go from di uh, analog to digital, telematics being inbuilt, casting being light weighting, various sensors being added, wiring harness going from BS4 to BS6 to EV. Where various EV product lines like DC-DC converters, battery chargers and some under development like motor controller and BMS. Our keyless of course irrespective of IC will be going in all, all vehicles. If you look at on the right side potential EV kit value from the current business of about 4 to 4,500 4, in a two wheeler is expected to go to about 16,000 to 20,000 as a potential EV kit. On the next slide, which are just some uh, business wins on the uh, marquee products as well as new products from Minda Corporation. So DC-DC converters, our target customers and customer wins are someone like BMW, TVS, etc. Battery chargers like Hero Electric Revolt, keyless entries like Ola, Piaggio, Pajaj, etc. Wiring harnesses like the Revolt. Our EV customers in the shown bottom are both two-wheelers, four-wheelers and commercial vehicles, even domestic and export. Our last slide on the value proposition of Minda Corporation, we want to be a high value technologically advanced products, global presence with 32 plants, 
achieve cost leadership in manufacturing and thought leadership position in technology and products, offering advanced technology products and systems, solution in light weighting, active safety, connected, electronification, and electrification. Technology tie-ups and partnerships with global automotive component companies, well-diversified customer base, product portfolio and business segments, low leverage providing significant flexibility for organic and inorganic growth. Four-tier governance structure to excel corporate governance and high focus on sustainability and strengthening the framework of ESG. With this, there are some more slides just on the company snapshot which you can refer at your own convenience. With this, I would like to conclude my presentation and hand over for any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have the first question from the line of Ronak Sarda from Systematics. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and congratulations on a great set of numbers. Um, Akash, first question, just a couple of financial clarifications. One, uh, on the net cash position or net debt position, this includes uh, uh, the cash balances from MIL, right, for, for the year ending, for year ending 22? Yes, uh, this includes the uh, high honor first of all, sorry. Um, yes, this includes uh, the cash balance uh, which is in uh, Minda Instruments Limited as well. Sure, okay. And uh, uh, the the tax write back, is that a cash item or a non-cash item? So the uh, 22 crores or one of which you have uh, highlighted in the quarter? Yes, it's a cash item. Okay, thanks. Uh, perfect. Uh, so, so yeah, I mean, uh, I think uh, the overall uh, growth trajectory has come back uh, despite, you know, weak industry and given our, you know, new order wins, how should we look at, uh, you know, next, uh, let's say, FI23 and FI24? Uh, I mean, even assuming industry remains at same level on an overall basis, uh, how should we factor in, you know, growth for, uh, for, for Minda? Uh, yeah, thank you, Ronak. Uh, again, our endeavor is always to grow higher 10 to 15 percent than the industry. Uh, mm -hmm. While the next financial year uh, looks to be, again, cautiously optimistic here because some segments are expected to do well and some may not. Uh, but again, as Minda Corporation, we are uh, wanting to grow higher than the industry and looking at various segments, uh, whether it's two-wheeler, four-wheeler, commercial vehicle, off-road uh, off uh, tractors. Monsoon is hopefully going to do good this year, so we may look at that as well. Um, so our expectation is to be uh, 10 to 15 percent higher. Uh, when it comes to the uh, uh, EBITDA numbers, uh, with these current challenges and the global tensions that we are seeing, we would like to first sustain these numbers um, uh, as committed before. So consistency is most important around uh, the 11 percent, uh, 12 percent is what we are uh, forecasting. Okay. Uh, great. And uh, and if I, I mean, look at the overall order win, uh, how do we see now our, you know, uh, I mean, we had a fairly customer, you know, a diversified customer base, uh, but this, this new order wins, you know, of almost, let's say, 3,500 odd crores in the current year, how does our customer, you know, mix look like, or how does our, you know, end segment uh, mix will look like? Uh, will we go back to very fairly diversified, you know, 33-35% uh, each segment kind of a mix now or how are we looking at the overall uh, mix? So uh, I'll uh, see as I uh, the current order wins that are there are not significantly significantly going to transform the uh, end customer gift. Uh, it is going to be primarily two-wheeler segment. It may come down from about 50% to somewhere 46, 47, depending on the market. Uh, but our focus is to grow other segments. Uh, I'll request uh, Mr. Margin to uh, 
uh, maybe add some comments on that. Uh, thank you very much, Akash, and uh, I don't know. I think the most important thing is for us to uh, consider two important aspects. We are trying to balance or uh, review our balance between two weeks to other segments, which we are looking at significantly. But I can uh, share that uh, apart from the EV segment, our main focus is to strengthen our business order book from our existing customers. Because okay. at this given point of time, we clearly see there is opportunity for us to strengthen uh, order book situation with our customers either through uh, gaining the share of business or introduction of a new product which we have worked hard, our SMIT has worked hard in the last three, four years time to strengthen and uh, increase that penetration. So kit value is very, very important for us if we are trying to strengthen, which is reflecting in 35,300 million uh, new order books, especially in this particular case. I hope this answers. Got it. Uh, that's really helpful. And uh, finally on the EV, I mean, uh, EV order book, right? Uh, so we are now, you know, uh, gaining a lot of uh, new component orders here as well, which are uh, thanks to uh, our R&D center. Uh, so how should we uh, look at the EV order ramping up and what was the overall top line in FY22? So, uh, Ranak, uh, here again, um, while the order books are there and both for uh, various segments, domestic and export, uh, it depends when these uh, orders are going to start kicking in. Uh, typically, again, the order book is uh, spread between five to six years when it comes to electric vehicle mobility uh, customers as of now. Uh, again, more important is their uptake. Uh, I can give a fair number, uh, but somewhere about uh, 75 to 80 crores should try and come in this year if uh, the two-wheeler market picks up uh, well. I think uh, just to add, we possibly can do much more uh, uh, with the EV segment right now, but you know the semiconductor situation uh, of the EV segment is affecting them to so not able to produce as much they, can, they would like to. So this number can uh, be positive uptick with if in case they are able to, uh, we are able to get uh, you know more semiconductors in this regard. So healthy 80 crores upwards at least. Uh, would be what we would look at. Right, perfect. And uh, just uh, what was the FI22 uh, EV contribution in FI22? Uh, absolute number? If you have uh, it. EV, EV, you are asking? Yeah. It was about 20 odd crores. Okay, perfect. Uh, thank you, and all the viewers. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Bargo from MK Global. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Am I audible? Yes, Bhargav. Hi. Yeah, yeah hi. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. I just wanted to know whether the company is looking at any inorganic uh, growth opportunity. And if yes, then what are the areas that the company would be looking at? Which are the areas, which are the places? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yes, Bhargav. Uh, so, <clears throat> again, uh, we have been definitely looking at uh, various opportunities uh, for inorganic. Uh, there are three avenues. One is, of course, how we can grow our own uh, marquee products and legacy businesses through technology uh, with partnerships or alliances. Second is look at new product lines that we continue to add um, uh, in our portfolio, but the focus remains on how we can grow our own core areas. And the third is on the M&A front. Uh, when it comes to the M&A, we have decided very clear norms internally on what we will look at and where. So we are very clear that we are not going to look at large operations based companies overseas. Um, we want to stay in our own core areas. We want to stay in our own product lines. And we know this country better with huge opportunities, so we will focus in India. Um, so we, of course, we keep continue to get opportunities, but they have to tick box, tick box all the norms uh, before we finally decide to take a, take a plunge. Thank you so much, Akash. That was helpful. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Abhishek Jain from Dalit Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Sir, uh, in this quarter, widely harness business has improved slightly. Uh, so what is your uh, margin target for FY23? So, uh, like we have uh, you know, shared, our endeavor is to uh, go from current 
about mid single digit numbers to a higher single digit number in the next uh, uh, few quarters uh, and sustain in their, their, those numbers by various initiatives that we are taking. Uh, so move towards uh, about a, a low double digit number in about uh, you know six to eight quarters from now. And um, you know, there are various initiatives that have been taken in that respect. The first and most important is the uh, localization of uh, various uh, imported connectors uh, that we are looking at. Uh, and also um, improving our productivity and uh, manpower related efficiencies uh, because it's a more uh, uh, manpower related uh, product. And uh, third, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, strategic initiatives being taken with the suppliers or others uh, which will help us reduce our raw material fluctuation and other things. Uh, so, sir, during uh, this quarter, we have seen a, a significant growth in the MSCV segment. So, most probably that uh, product mix would be very strong in the wiring harness business. Despite that, uh, we have seen only the uh, margin improvement of 20 gigs. So, in this situation, what could be a uh, assumption for the FY23 sir, for this uh, wiring harness? Sorry, your voice is not clear. I'm sorry. Can you repeat the question, please? Uh, sir, uh, in wiring hiring business, uh, we have seen just uh, 20 bits margin improvement despite the strong product mix because uh, these quarters uh, uh, CV numbers was very strong. So what assumption we can take for the FY23 numbers in terms of the margin uh, improvement? So yeah, for, if I understand the question correctly, the uh, margins for wiring harness division for next year, right? Yeah, yeah, sir. Yeah, so as I mentioned, so currently about let's say 7.5, we would like to increase it, uh, you know, uh, in, the, in the next, uh, uh, you know, four or five quarters. It may not touch double digit, but yeah, significant improvement over the next four quarters. Okay, sir. My next question is uh, related with the die casting business. So how is the current utilization and uh, how, what is your capacity fund for this uh, particular business? So uh, if I speak about our uh, die casting business um, on the quarter uh, three to quarter four, so quarter three we did about 128 crores, in quarter four uh, we have done about 154 crores. If I speak about the uh, full year number for the die casting, uh, we did about 425 crores in the last year, and this year we have done 529 crores, which is a 25% jump. Um, of course, this division focuses a lot on the exports and the formula market. Uh, when it comes to the investment, definitely it's a, a capex uh, uh, intensive uh, thing, but it, it has a high EBITDA uh, uh, growth as well as uh, exports. So we, we are very cautious when we invest because uh, this, these businesses are uh, backed up by our customer requirements. Uh, typically, our investments uh, in this year for the uh, die casting uh, is uh, close to around uh, about 30 crores uh, for the die casting for the businesses which are going to have SOP in the next few quarters. And uh, how, how much uh, current ca capacity utilization in this business, sir? So, um, in the current capacity utilization of, just one second, please. So yeah, the uh, die casting uh, facility with the current capacity utilization uh, would be somewhere about uh, 60 to 70 percent. Okay, okay sir. And so my last question is related with the uh, outlook for the Asian uh, two-wheeler uh, locking system business. How is the progress right now? For the security division you mean? Yeah. So you're speaking about the ASEAN or you're speaking about the security systems division? So, uh, so security systems uh, division both in India and Asia. Right. So if I speak about the uh, uh, security system division in the in the quarter, um, we were we did about uh, uh, 250 crores in the uh, quarter three, and we've done about the similar uh, numbers in about quarter three this year, quarter four this year. If I speak about year-on-year -year basis, we did about a 739 crores in the last year, with a 23% jump in this year to about 908 crores. So, so despite the uh, degrowth in the two-wheelers uh, uh, volumes, the uh, growth is 23%. Is it because of uh, 
increased in the realization only? Uh, no, there are a couple of factors. One is definitely uh, focus on the exports market and the uh, aftermarket increase uh, from this division. Okay. Thanks. That's all yeah. for my side. Thank you. Thank you. Participants who wish to ask a question may press star and 1 on your touchstone telephone. Participants who wish to ask a question may press star and 1 on your touchstone telephone. We have the next question from the line of Noel Waz from Asian Market Securities. Please go ahead. Mr. Noel Waz, can you hear us? Uh, can you hear me? Uh, hello? Yes, we can hear you now. Ah, yes, sorry about that. Uh, yes, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, yes, so I just had uh, one query. So right now with uh, the disruption to uh, in coming out of China in uh, for most of 1Q, has the is company any kind of disruption in terms of uh, spares or certain components which, which are coming from you know, China? Or uh, also uh, one other thing is that so regarding the uh, increased indigenization or even say the inter internal sourcing of components, uh, what is the progress has been on that front? That's my only question. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Noel. Um, so definitely China imports do continue to be a very big threat and concern going forward, uh, which may hamper the entire industry as well as Minda Corporation's performance in the upcoming quarters. Um, if so, again, primarily on the electronics and other logistic cost issues and uh, you know, increase in the raw material prices or from China uh, is definitely impacting and this also impacts Minda Corporation and will be impacting in future if the things continue uh, to, to uh, work out this way. So we are definitely working on various uh, initiatives but there are some, some things which are outside our control which will definitely impact in the upcoming quarter uh, in the quarter one and quarter two next year. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Participants who wish to ask a question may press star and one on your touchstone telephone. We have the next question from the line of Abhishek Jain from Dalat Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, sir, uh, how was the product mix in the wiring harness business in FY22? How is the what? Sorry for wiring harness? Products mixed in the wiring harness business, it means the two wheelers, EVs, and commercial vehicles. Uh, Mr. Jain, this is the operator. I would request you to go off the speakerphone as we are not able to hear you very clearly. Hello? Yes, this is better. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. so just uh, I was asking about the product mix in the wiring harness business. I mean to say two wheelers, EVs, and CVs contributions in FY22. Yeah, so in the wiring harness, uh, about 50% uh, contributes uh, is what, what by two and three wheelers. Uh, four wheelers contribute about 10%, and commercial vehicles contribute about 30-35%. Okay, sir. And uh, how the mix will change in the coming year? I mean to say that in FR23, well, we are looking at strong growth in the commercial vehicle segment. So, uh, of course, uh, if the commercial vehicle segments grow, it is going to give positive impact to Minda Corporation. Um, but again, we have to really wait and watch how each segment really performs in the upcoming quarters. Okay, sir. And what is the margin difference between the uh, uh, wiring harness uh, business in series versus the two-wheelers? I can just say that in the commercial vehicles, it, it is higher. So, it, it would be the higher by the 200 bits? Sorry? It would be the higher by 200 or 300 bips? Sorry, uh, that's a little confidential and wouldn't be able to share, but yes, it is higher. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, you have also followed into the interior plastic business in the domestic market, and you have also given the order books. So, how is the outlook for the this business, and uh, what is the break-even? So, uh, uh, this business uh, is again a very small division right now, but the uh, focus is on the four-wheeler aspects of this business. Uh, in this year, now again, we have a few SOPs coming in uh, from uh, the likes of our four-wheeler OEMs, largest OEMs, as well as the largest SUV manufacturers, uh, even in light weighting. 
so this division is definitely being a small base is going to grow faster uh, but definitely it is uh, not a big impact on the Minda corporation numbers as of now uh, currently uh, it is about a 50 crore uh, business uh, for the last financial year okay sir uh, my last question is related with the capex so how much capex you have done in fy22 and uh, what is your capex plan for fy23 sir so typically our uh, capex is uh, about 4 to 5 percent uh, uh, in our uh, uh, from the, uh, compared to the revenue uh, now most of this basically goes into the uh, engineering or technology as well as uh, uh, our regular capex and maintenances as well as our brownfield initiatives that we're looking at uh, if i speak about the last financial year in fi22 <coughs> we've done about 100 crore of uh, capex uh, how much, sir? Hundred one double zero. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, uh, uh, there's a one bookkeeping question. Uh, can you uh, please provide us the Minda Stonbridge revenue, EBITDA, and VAT uh, for FY22? Yes, it is Minda Instruments Limited now. Yeah. And uh, just to share with you the numbers for Minda Instruments Limited. Um, so, if I speak about quarter four numbers, uh, the sales were 137 crores. EBITDA stood at 18.7, and EBITDA percentage was about 13.5. Uh, but we had some uh, extraordinary customer uh, customer recoveries this quarter. Um, and uh, if I speak about the entire year, uh, for the full year uh, FY22, we are about 485 crores as top line, uh, and EBITDA percentage is about 11 percent. Okay, and how much revenue are targeting for the next year? Uh, uh, and what would be the growth driver for this uh, business? Sir? So for this business, uh, again, the growth uh, uh, drivers are on the premiumization and the customer segments. If I speak about the products, so the instrument clusters are now moving from analog to digital. So they will definitely be giving premiumization on our product lines, adding uh, products in the sensor portfolio, uh, and definitely increasing our penetration to the other segments uh, beyond two-wheeler. Um, and looking at exports also, we will be the road driver for this uh, division. And uh, what would be the content for vehicles in uh, instrument cl cluster, sir? So see, a typical instrument cluster currently is about uh, 600 to 700. Uh, now going in future, depending on the segment, depending on the customization of the product, uh, it may uh, go to about 2000 uh, upwards. Uh, again, you can keep adding many features, uh, but the important part is that this product I will have more of uh, customization and individualization, uh, styling, designing, electronics uh, going forward. So yes, it will help us uh, increase the content per vehicle. Uh, sir, instrument cluster is uh, one of the uh, important uh, part of the EVs uh, two wheelers. So the content per vehicle will increase significantly uh, in the EV side. So again, uh, irrespective of EV, all the product lines of the Minda Corporation, including the clusters, whether it is EV or ICE, will go through a premiumization route. Um, again, uh, we have started getting orders uh, which will soon come into the market. Uh, whether it's an ICE engine or an EV vehicle, uh, they will have these product lines which are upgraded and improved and premiumized clusters and products. Okay, sir. Thanks, sir. That's all from my side. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Shashank Kanodia from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening, sir. Congratulations for a stupendous performance. Uh, sir, my question is pertains to the end market share that you have shared in terms of uh, the vehicle category regarding two wheelers, passenger vehicles, and TV. So, so, if I do a simple arithmetic, uh, your TV segment seems to nearly doubled from 260 odd course to 520 this year. So, were there any significant customer gains in that space? Uh, sorry, which segment are you speaking about? I think there's a line issue at my end. Passenger vehicle segment, sir. Passenger vehicle segment. Uh, yeah. Yes, so uh, again, the passenger vehicle segments, uh, there are the product lines, for example, as I mentioned, the uh, interior plastics. The die casting exports are primarily for the four wheeler um, uh, uh, customers. Uh, also, our partnerships like the Infact for the antenna, which will come into play, uh, but that's another aspect of it. Um, also, in terms of the Minda Vast, the, all the product lines are focusing on the uh, four-wheeler uh, vehicle access uh, system solutions. 
So these are how our are looking like and uh, again wiring harnesses and other such uh, connection system that you're looking at is also for the passenger vehicles now as well. Okay, but but there were uh, no new customer wins in this space, right? Or were they? Yes, so the customer base is definitely expanding and growing both domestically and uh, exports. Again, uh, as Mr. Margin mentioned earlier, our endeavor and focus is to uh, you know, increase the share of business in the existing platforms and the products that we are into and then grow uh, uh, with them uh, by delivering them uh, with the new launches and uh, more and more products. That's the endeavor. Okay. And so similarly, if I do this mathematics of CV space, so you have largely underperformed the category, right? So last year, your CV sales were roughly 500 odd crores and this year you ended by 550. Just made 10% growth while the market has grown roughly 30%. So any specific reason for it? So uh, see in the CV space uh, definitely uh, the market is growing now and uh, all our uh, products are now going to see in the end of the light uh, in terms of the uh, customer wins. Uh, so you will start seeing the results uh, very soon uh, with the higher customer uh, sales happening. And lastly, sir, what will be the company-wide capacity creation levels and peak turnovers that we can do of the trend asset base? Sorry, you'll have to repeat the question, please. Yeah, so what is the company-wide uh, capacity utilization levels for us uh, as of last financial year? And what is the peak turnover that we can do out of our current asset pools? So every plant and every uh, product has a different capacity utilization depending on the customers and the segments. Uh, each plant is uh, selling. Uh, if I have to generally speak about, uh, it's currently about uh, 65 to 70 uh, percent is the capacity utilization all across. Now it may vary depending on the product or the plant or the segment. Understood, sir. Thank you so much. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Mohit Khanna from Banyan Capital. Please go ahead. Hello, uh, everyone. Uh, good evening and uh, congratulations on a good set of numbers here. Uh, first of all, uh, just drawing the attention on the last slide of the presentation where we have uh, the free cash flow uh, numbers and then uh, when we uh, did the net debt numbers, uh, the position for the company has moved from you know uh, the net cash position to a net debt position. We're just trying to understand uh, what exactly uh, has uh, got into the cash uh, and how did we move from net cash to net debt position also because uh, the BSC filing that you guys have done in that the notes to accounts are actually not really visible so maybe some uh, you know uh, some error uh, in terms of printing or something so it was, so if you could just clarify on that thank you so much yeah so the cash flow from operations uh, uh, you know have been about 208 crores uh, the change in working capital has been negative 70 uh, and we've done about 108 crores of capex as I mentioned earlier. Uh, in this year again we have in, done investments in the subsidiaries as well as other partnerships of about 170 crores uh, which is including Minda Instruments uh, uh, limited uh, takeover. Um, yeah, so these are the uh, major reasons uh, where uh, the cash flow has uh, been utilized. Right, and and is there is there any other plan for the next year on the group level to you know continue consolidating the other uh, subsidiaries? We are still left with uh, Purukawa and other uh, you know subsidiaries and joint ventures. Is it an internal plan to you know continue the, on the same path? So uh, Purukawa is 25%, uh, and uh, that is a joint venture which we don't uh, expect to consolidate because merely of the shareholding. Uh, there are other partnerships uh, which we will uh, we don't intend to consolidate as of now because we want to first grow these businesses along with our partners and we believe in partnerships. So that is what we would like to do. Yeah, okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. We have the next question from the line of Jay Kale. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for taking my question. So just one question on your wiring harness uh, division. Uh, you know, you mentioned at the start of your commentary that, uh, you know, the orders that you've got, uh, some, of the, uh, you know, some of the OEMs you mentioned. Now, you mentioned wiring harness you want for revolt. Just wanted to understand in this uh, BS6 to EV transition, 
uh, how what what is the company doing to kind of get more orders on the hindi side for wiring harness because uh, it looks like that in the uh, new age startups or even the incumbents uh, you've got orders for many of the other products uh, like smart key solution or dc dc converters uh, but somewhere your wiring harness uh, uh, you know division seems to be uh, lagging to a certain extent so anything that the, you can mention that how uh, what the company is doing to you know kind of uh, spruce up this technology or uh, kind of gain more share in this yeah jay so uh, there are two things okay firstly wiring harnesses for electric vehicle mobility would be classified into two one is high voltage and low voltage okay low voltage still remains the same which are currently going in the existing uh, uh, you know two wheelers or any other customers or product lines If I speak about high voltage wiring harness, which is how the um, technology shift is going to happen when it comes to the uh, high voltage cables and high voltage connection systems. Uh, again, for Minda Corporation, we are developing and have a team in house uh, working on the uh, various uh, you know uh, EDS of the complete vehicle architecture, uh, and wiring harness is one part of it. And also, uh, definitely, we are targeting other customers uh, to win businesses from them as well to grow this. Uh, opportunity so there are various initiatives that are going uh, in house uh, for the electric vehicle uh, wiring harness uh, across all segments and this uh, thank thanks and all the best uh, operator thanks. if there are any further questions uh mr jaykari do you have any further questions no that's all for me Uh, as we have no further questions, I would now hand it over to the management for closing comments. So, thank you very much, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and uh, once again for joining the uh, quarter four and uh, annual presentation earnings call of uh, Spark Minda and Minda Corporation Limited. Um, again, we continue to focus on our consistent performance and sustainable growth. Um, that's our endeavor. and as mr minda mentioned in the beginning um, our focus is on focusing on uh, cost leadership in operation excellence our uh, thought leadership in technology uh, driving technology from in house initiatives and global tie ups uh, growing customers and market segments uh, generating higher free cash flow and very important is right capital allocation so that is how we would like to uh, proceed further and again thank you very much for joining the call and if you have any questions you may reach out to mr anshul saxena uh, and he can provide you all the details thank you thank you on behalf of velara securities private limited that concludes the conference thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines